G'day Comrade subscribers, I hope everyone's well. Um, I got some feedback on the forum about a possible reason why the Lviv isn't booting. Um, basically, an issue with the ROM, or ROMs. Basically, the idea is that BASIC, BASIC isn't even starting. So, same issue with the ROMs. So, as you can see, we've got, well, I believe, eight ROMs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got eight ROMs. Oh, there's... And they are type, oh, I'm reading this upside down, KR573RF, a little sticky over it. Can't see it because the little sticky's over it. Oh, there's little stickies off, oh, great. Um, KR573RF5. So I'm, I'm assuming that they are, that's probably their address range, E8, E0, D8, C0. So going up, up to F8 there. So is that 2K? Going from on an E8 to F0. I just assumed that these were 2K ROMs. Um, I could be wrong, I don't know. Let me just cover that one up. Oops, sorry, I need to knock it. Uh, yeah, so a bit of a pain if it is. Well, might be a pain, might not be a pain. Um, on two of the boards I've got, it's the, it's the low ROM. I assume this is the low ROM, C0, that is socketed. So so this is the board I'm trying to get working with the RGB inverter. So C0 is socketed. This is my original board. The nicest one, I think. Uh, which may or may not work. Maybe maybe my issue before was just um, the inverted RGB. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but it's also, it's got the nicer ceramic ROMs. Um, and again, C0 is, is the only one socketed. So these these ones are K573 RF5s as well. Okay. But they are dated 90. Okay. And these are dated 91, 91, 91. I thought this one was an 80. That's an 88 down there. Interesting how they switch between plastic and ceramic. So if it's just the C0 that's the issue, then maybe this C0 is the problem and I can just swap it over with this one if this one works. Um, the other board is kind of the best one for troubleshooting. Got my big arms in the way. because all of the ROMs are socketed. Let me just tidy up a bit here. Let me just move this out of the way. I, I hate this bloody power cable. I wish it was just a socket. So I might do that. Okay, stick that there. So I haven't tried this one. This board might work, I don't know. Um, this is the board that's had all the decoupling capacitors removed. So it was like, oh, you know, bit of a hassle um, so I could try and put all the decoupling capacitors on um, I would also have to do um, invert the RGB output as well but that's not such a big deal I guess um, but yeah all of these ROMs are well are uncovered for a start but they're all socketed uh, assume they're the same KR573RF5 yeah so I'll look that up well, I've probably already printed it on the screen. Uh, so, I've looked online. There is one source I have for ROM images, but they've got three 16K files, not kind of eight separate files. So, obviously, you know, you could split split the 16K file up into, um, into this range here. Um, yeah. So, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'm going to, de I'm going to desocket all of these. I'm going to dump these. And I'm going to dump the other two C0s and compare them. Because something must be working. So, I'm just trying to think. When, when it's a ROM issue, what could, what could the issues be? Okay, it could be address line. It could be an address line is an issue. In which case, I assume all of these have got the same address lines. In that case, 
I shouldn't be seeing the question mark SN, should I? Because that's obviously coming from the character, um, unless the character ROM's separate. But I'm assuming the address lines are working. Um, of course, it could be one of them is a broken pin. So the other thing is it could be uh, data isn't some. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just rambling. <laughs> I just don't. I just don't want to desolder all of these, <laughs> all of these ROMs. I just wish I could just swap them out to see C zero. So yeah. All right. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to dump all of these ones. I'm going to dump the other two C zeros. Um, and do a quick comparison just to see if there is anything different. And then have a think. Okay. Okay, so I actually as as I remove the um as I remove the, the ROM, I remembered what the issue with the ICAR sixty four, the ICARDIS was, if you remember. Um dodgy sockets that was it that was I, th I think it had two two rom sockets and um yeah one of the sockets was dodgy so that was that was how i, I ran into another issue that's why you haven't seen the icarus again because <laughs> um i think i i desoldered the socket something and then one of the bits of metal from the pin or something shot underneath one of the one of the other chips and of course you know you don't know if you're going to short because we're not we don't have any conformal coding um and yeah anyway so that's why you haven't seen the icarus again for a while because of that issue anyway so that's the socket there uh the results i did so th these are these are the roms i've got so basically i've got c0 for all of them and then i've got a full set for for the one that's had all the um capacitors removed so this one from this machine i couldn't read it it was uh, several pins gave errors this ceramic one read perfectly so i was able to dump that and this one also had issues this one i read it it was apparently empty <laughs> this one uh it was flagging multiple pins having issues so it very well could be if the socket's okay it very well could be uh, as long as these are okay, but I'm now starting to doubt that. Um, yeah, so uh, the other issue is yeah, that these are, in, in fact, 2716 analogs, so 16 kilobit, 2 kilobyte, so we've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, yeah, so 16 kilobytes of ROM in total. Uh, I don't. I do have 2716s, but I can't burn them. Um, my programmer doesn't go back that far. It'll read them, but it won't burn them. Um, so what I would need to do if I have to, if, if all the ceramics are good, then I could desolder them and then des it's going to, I'd, I'd, I don't really have much luck desoldering on these boards because yeah, they don't like a lot of heat anyway. So if it's just the chip, so I'm going to stick the, the ceramic in and see if that makes any difference. If not, then maybe it's the socket. If not, then maybe there's another issue along here as well. Um, the other thing is, can I put in a 16K, say, what, a 27, two, no, 16 is what, 27, um, 1, 2, 8? Could I just put in a single 27, 1, 2, 8? Um, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm guessing... How, how how would you do it? Would you? I assume there's a chip select line or output enable or something. So you would use that as the additional address line on a twenty seven sixteen, I guess. So it's active low, so you'd have to invert it, I guess. So if it was active, so when it come, so when chip select is low on this one, actually we're going that way, aren't we? So low address to high address. Yeah, so say, uh, anyway, I'm just thinking out loud. Um, let's, let's just try. I'm not confident. I'm not confident, but let's just try this nice ceramic in here. See, it's, uh, well, anyway, it is in solid, but yeah, anyway. All right, so 
I just need to get power supply, turn on that, turn on that screen. All right, let's 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 give this a go. All right, let's power on. <laughs> awesome. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> so that's not booting at all. Uh, did I put, nah, I put the chip in upside down, idiot. All right, let's try again. Okay, that was working before. Yeah, same issue. So, it could be, let's say, uh, mm, cause I don't trust those replacements I've got. So the only thing I've, I trust the ceramics. I have to desolder the ceramics, desolder these. Ah, oh, fuck it. No, I'm not going to desolder these. I'm just going to chop the legs off. Yeah, chop the legs off. So, yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll chop these chop these legs off. Um, I might try and desolder one. If, if it comes out okay, then I'll do the rest and I'll keep them because, you know, I can always um, try and reuse them. But if they don't come out friendly, you know, if they start, if I start damaging the board, then I'm just going to chop the legs. Although that can make, oh, oh, I don't know. Uh, always use sockets. <laughs> and then I'm going to replace them, I guess. Try and desolder these fellows. All right. Um, and also remove this socket. Put, uh, although uh, uh, that it's two and a half mil spacing, isn't it? Two and a half mil spacing. Um, so unless I want to remove all the other sockets as well, but then I'm gonna. Oh, this is, I can see this is going to be turned into a disaster. I wonder if I should try this one, this original one again. I have to have a look at the video, see what was what it was doing. Maybe. Um, all right, well, let's um, let's see if I can desolder. All right, so yeah, I'm not confident. Um, obviously, some of the ROM is working because, like I said, we get question mark SN, so the text is formed correctly, and we also get that that uh, fancy splash screen at the start. But I have no idea where in memory that is. Um, that would be helpful because then I could maybe just avoid replacing those ROMs. But um, yeah, this this type of circuit board doesn't really like heat. Actually, one thing I think think thinking of doing is maybe if I just reflow the solder. I don't think it's going to make any difference, but I, I was going to reflow the solder anyway before I try and suck it up so i might do that reflow the solder first and then try um hello again greetings from 2024 so i don't know where i got up to yesterday it's got a got a bit tired actually i think i was going to um reflow the solder i did i had a look um and i've got a redrawn schematic of the roms and um as most of you probably already assumed there's a um there's a three to eight demuxer or three to eight muxer, demuxer, three to eight demuxer that takes address lines uh, A11, 12, and 13 and generates um, eight outputs here for the eight uh, ROM chips. So that's how we get the addition, that's how we get the 16K, obviously, because each, each 2K ROM chip um, is A0 to A10. So A11, 12, 13. Um, basically is connected to the uh, enable pin on each of the eight. So, um, yeah, so 74 ls 138 or the Soviet K555 ID7. Uh, so it's uh, chip uh, D9. 
So that is another possibility as well also. If this demuxing isn't working properly, then that could also be a problem. So I had a look and I did find the, the, the key to finding these chips is basically to look at the last three characters. So I don't bother looking for K555 or whatever, just look for the last ones. And in this case, it's ID7. So we found, we've got ID7 here. So, I don't know, it looks a bit rough. Looks a bit rough, I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's worth checking that one out. Um, maybe that's the issue. Could be something simple as that. Um, yeah, so another possibility. Uh, of course, the other thing is also that now that we've got the schematic here, that we could replace this with a with a 16 kilobyte um, 27128 very simply. Um, We've got, we've got ROM output enable down here, coming from a SEM408. Uh, that's just going into there. But I think otherwise, what else do we pick up? I don't think actually anything else. We've got memory read goes into the um, G. So I'm not sure. What that is. is that G? Is that enable? I'm not sure. So yeah, so I think it'd be pretty well. One, one, if, if these were socketed, it would be pretty simple because you can just stick, pull them all out of the sockets and then wire in. So first things first, I think I might... I could even replace this with a SIM4LS 138 as well. But again, I'm not too trusting of the board, that the board isn't going to get damaged. So anyway... I'll um, start just by reflowing and see how we go. Right, so I reflowed the solder on the uh, DMUX, um, but then I thought I might just try the logic analyzer on it, um, just to see whether, you know, when we have, have the three address lines, what's coming out. Um, reason why you don't see me use it more often, it's, it's a brilliant bit of kit and software, especially on the Mac, is that the because the wires are so short, I understand propagation time and all that, but it means, you know, you practically have to lie it on the board itself. And these things are so damn fiddly that they just keep popping off all the time and just end up just pissing me off. So that's why I don't use it more often. I should use it. So what I'm going to try is I've got a nice turn socket that I've just sat on top. And I had a thought that I could stick these in. Because right, that fits on quite nicely, nice and solid. So stick these in. Um, let me just chop them off, and then I could probably stick this in directly, and that would be that's much better than these stupid little bloody clips that keep falling off. So I'm going to try that. Let's see. Right, I've gone mobile, but here's the end result, which I think is much better, <laughs> much more stable. Um, so hopefully that well I have given it a quick try it seems to be working um, so basically we've got the three address lines A11, 12, 13 we've got the, um, the enable pin E1 and 2 active low E3 is tied high that's active high so I haven't got that one and then we've got these eight output lines here as well so I'm not seeing any activity on that one so that's the idea there so I don't know, maybe we don't need <laughs> whatever d15 I don't know see I don't know what I don't know how the ROMs are split up so um, yeah let's have a run and have okay, a look let's start again turn the power off so power on actually let's start capture Start capturing, power on. Okay. So if we zoom out, then we can see that on 05, there's just no, that's never going high from what I can see. So for it to go high, let's write this down. So this is A11. 
A12 and A13. So for O5 to go, actually it should be high all the time, it's according to this. Was it active low? Hmm. What's well, saying? So basically, all the output should be high. Okay, this is for an LS138. Um, except three binary weighted inputs. Okay, A11, 12, and 13. And when enabled, provides eight mutually exclusive active low outputs. All right, so it's always low. Okay, <laughs> it's always low. It never goes high. O5 is always active. Okay. So O5, O5 is D15, is the ROM chip D15. So maybe that's always active. Okay, okay. But is it always, is it's always, it never is inactive? That's, I would have thought we should see it go high sometimes if these are active so okay so if we want it to see it go low or high for it to go low we need no 05 05 we need high low high a11 high a12 low a13 high So are we ever seeing, I think I could probably, I think I could probably, can I do some, I can do some sort of analyzer here. Um, query, basically what I want, basically what I want, data table, terminal, okay, basically what I want, no, select analyzer, trigger view, oh, okay. Now, so basically what I want is, I need to scroll up here, I scroll up here, tiny little scroll bar, scroll up here. Okay, so, A, when, do we ever get high, low, high? That's what we want to know. If we if we get high, low, high, if we get high, low, high, then we should see some change in O5. That's what I'm wondering. Or is it inverted? So, so this is what I'm kind of trying to figure out here. If you follow along with me, so O5, so O5, so everything's always high because it's active, um, it's active low, so it goes low when we've got high, low, high. But does that mean low, high, low? We want. <laughs> okay. The thing is, I'm 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 expecting O5 to be kind of. expect it to be inactive at some stage why are we always what is so special about d15 is d15 where basic is i don't that's the thing i don't know so one thing i could do is just basically piggyback another 74ls138 on that and just see if i get different different output but if going from this high low high so we've got a high we've got a low and we've got a high okay so a11 is High, A12 is low, oh, you can't see that, sorry, talking to myself. Zoom out again. All right, so we've got up here, high, A11, low, A12, high, A13. And then enables go on active low. So we've got high, 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 low, sorry, I'm trying to scroll down these scroll bars, high, high, okay, so that is what I'm expecting, 
but then when we get something different, so say we've got we've got low, low, low. What does low, low, low give us? Low, low, low gives us high on O0. Or low on, oh, but then it's active high. Okay, enable is not active. Um, okay, so this one here, active low, active low. Low, high, uh, what about, okay, what about here? So what about this one here? We've got low, what is it, high, low, high. High, high, high. High, high, high. I don't know, does that line up? High, high, high. Yeah, and we get output on 07. So 05 is so 05 should should have gone high then, and it's not going high at all. I've taken six minutes to try and say that. So maybe that's the issue. Maybe that's the problem. Let's replace it. Right. So I have replaced the original. Um, I kind of butchered it unfortunately I <laughs> did try desoldering it but I wasn't having any luck and I didn't want to damage the circuit board so yeah the, the original what's it say KR1533 ID7 Sem4LS138 <laughs> I just um, chopped the legs off unfortunately and have um, soldered in a, um, a socket and put in a Sempor LS138. So now it's just, I want to power on and see if that makes any difference. Um, so I'll just, I won't hook up the, where did I put my little invention? Oh, here it is. It's all ready to go. So I'm not going to hook up my, um, my little uh, analyzer thing. I'll just connect it up in case it's not working, just to see if that 05 um, output 5 is actually working now. Okay, let's see. Okay, power on. Hmm, that's not good. <laughs> um, excellent, I've made it worse. I'm a bit concerned about that was what I was seeing before. So I was a bit concerned. I don't like that kind of soldering there. <laughs> but a bit concerned about, yeah, some of these bypass capacitors or decoupling capacitors. Uh, because they don't use conformal coding, it doesn't take much. The legs just going through the legs some of this like this leg was kind of almost touching um, power on again no junk okay well it's definitely made a difference hasn't it still getting junk all the other capacitors seem to be okay can't see anything obvious yeah, we've still got junk. Okay. Let's hook up the analyzer again. All right, so maybe some progress, but it's still not working. Um, I think the 3 to 8 is now working. If I just kick this off again, blah, blah, blah. And pretty much you can see that we're cycling through A11, A11, A12, A13. And, yeah, pretty much we're cycling through if we spent open these up a bit and you can see definitely that 05 is now working before 05 wasn't working but I would say what this indicates I'm just trying to scroll down what this indicates is that it's not executing any code it's just cycling through addresses um, so we come back to there being a ROM issue <laughs> I guess so um, I think I have fixed something but maybe I've stuffed something else up. I don't know, before we weren't... So before we, we, we didn't have any output 
So D15 wasn't uh, was never active, and so we did get some sort of you know some sort of execution. But now that we've got all the outputs working, we're um, yeah we're not. It doesn't look like we're executing any code. So I'm assuming the 8080 is like the Z80. Well, because the Z80 is based on the 8080, but it starts at address zero. So I'm assuming that when it boots. I don't know what the, what the starting address is. Is it C zero zero zero? It somehow, you know, gets moved from z uh, address zero to C zero zero zero. But yeah, so yeah, I think I'll end it there for today. I'm seriously thinking of just maybe seeing if I can shoehorn in a twenty seven uh, so twenty seven one two eight just to avoid these other ROMs. But um, I think I'll fix something at least, because that three to three to um, three to eight demuxer is now now working. But maybe these ROMs aren't somewhere in these ROMs. So, so it's it's trying to it's it's obviously jumping to some address, but it's not executing. It's not getting any response. So it's just cycling through addresses. But even if it's doing that, it should hit some code, shouldn't it? Shouldn't it hit some code to execute? So I'm wondering if there's a short on the data bus, maybe, or on one of the ROM data buses, perhaps. Yeah, anyway, we'll leave it for there, for now, and we'll continue in the next part. Getting closer.